Hello, Mr. Gazda here, homework 581. Okay, so column A, column B, column C, column D. Look at the sizes, look at the stuff you want to see here. So here you have water set up and a screen. Um, hopefully you can see this is, they're setting this up to be a capillarity uh, experiment or demonstration. But large silt, medium sand, large sand, small pebbles. So um, hopefully you can see this is this case, uh, you should be able to figure this out. Smallest to largest. So largest is here and then it gets smaller in sediment. That's going to help it goes in a nice order. Um, look at uh, one right here. Which column will have the lowest capillary action? And look what I did. I wrote what capillary action is because this is something you need to know. Make sure this gets in your head. Make sure it gets in your head because capillary action is water moving upward through the sediment similar to water moving upward in a, pa in, um, a paper towel. As it, as it climbs upward, clinging to the sediment and within the space of the sediment. The lowest capillary action, water will travel up the least. You need to know that it will be the largest sediment will have the least. Therefore, that should be choice A, column A. All right. Um, two. Which column will have the lowest permeability? And permeability is how easily water flows through. So the lowest permeability means water does not flow through easily. It flows through difficultly or slowly. That is a function of size. The smaller the sediment, the s less permeability. The large sediment, water will flow through fast. So I'm looking for lowest permeability. For the smallest, it is going to be D. Water will go through at the slowest if we were pouring water through. Not necessarily what they show here, but you get the idea. Um, three. Which will have the highest water retention? And that is water that stays on the sediment after it has drained. So this is after a permeability experiment, water flowing through, how much still stays in the sediment does not come out. It clings to the surface of the sediment within the spaces. That's what causes water retention. And you need to know the smaller sediment will have the most water retention and the larger sediments will have the least because there's less surface area here and the spaces are larger between them, will hold less sediment. I mean, water would hold less water, and this will hold the most. So I'm looking for highest water retention. That is D. And then four, which ground would have more runoff in heavy rain? Ground composed of B, ground composed of C. Now I'm composing this. More runoff. So rain hits the ground, and it can do one of two things. It, ru it can do runoff, which is stay on the surface, flow downhill, or it will infiltrate, go into the ground. Okay, so uh, to have a, the mo more runoff, basically, uh, the less infiltration you have, the more runoff you'll have. So to have more runoff, you need water to go into the ground slowly, more difficult to go into the ground. Therefore, I'm looking for the smaller sediment. Smaller sediment will um, produce the more, more runoff because it doesn't go into the ground as easy. So uh, which is smaller, B or C? C. More runoff, less infiltration. B is going to have more infiltration, less runoff than C. All right, cool. On the back. Now, on the back, check this out. This is hefty. This is a one big question here. Okay. There's a lot to this. I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but definitely read through the whole entire thing. You really have to understand all this. This is, you got to put a lot of effort in just to get this one question right, but there's, but there's a lot to it. So, 2A, 2B. Uh, this is for tube A, it tells you water required to fill the pore spaces, that's basically porosity here, this is porosity. Time required for draining, that's like um, infiltration time, permeability time. Water that remained around the beads after draining, that's water retention. So this is for A and you want to compare it to B. So B, you should have, uh, I could tell you some basic things, B, the porosity should be the same for B, so it should be the same, same for B. That, that, that says same. Let's write that nicer. That says same. The time required for draining for B should be more or less. Or the same. It should be less. Right? Time to go through. Water will go through faster through B. And water that remained around the beads after draining, because B is larger, should be less as well. So that's what I'm looking for in these choices here. So, um, I <clears throat> depends how you do this. But uh, I could definitely rule out a few of these. So I'm looking for less time to go through. Less time. So with that case, I could cross, I could cross this out and this out. So it's not two or three. Also, I know that the, if you know the porosity needs to be the same, okay, if you, need to, if you know the porosity needs to be the same, you also can cross this one out and this one out. So um, 
what you should have. Uh, it's going to lead you. You can figure it by whatever you know the best or latch onto the most. It's going to be a good place to start. I'm not sure where you are with that. But the answer is going to be, uh, it looks like it's going to be this one. So is that the same time required for drainage? You have less time with less water. Yes. So the answer for um, this one should be choice one. Choice one. Okay. That is a lot. Boy, the light really gets on there. Kind of weird. But you still should be able to see it. So, um, that was homework 581 for uh, myself, Mr. Gaz, and all the fine people who are part of this uh, at Gazzoni Productions. Thank you for watching homework uh, 581.